Good morning, crafters. This is Eloise with Paper Fire Studio. I'm here today to look at doing a different kind of video, and you can tell by the title. Um, I love watching other people's craft room tours. I love seeing how it's done, how they set it up. I always learn. I always get an idea from watching those videos. And so what I wanted to do is a craft room tour with some ideas to help you with your craft room. Um, we're in an old barn that my father-in-law actually had a vision <laughs> to redo it into my art studio. And half it's in half of the barn. It was had snakes in it and old fencing and I mean junk from 80 years ago sitting in this barn. So it was quite an ordeal to redo it. And I'm very proud of it and I show it off a lot. I have classes here. Um, a lot of, you know, uh, women will come in and we'll all comment about how inspiring it is. And that's going to be my theme today for the craft room tour. How can you even up the inspiration in your studio? And I've got some ideas. Um, the setup for this has evolved probably 50 times over the last seven or eight years because it takes a while to find how your craft room needs to be set up and how it fits you. Uh, we're going to talk about that more about that in a minute. But I do have some craft must-haves and right now you're looking at a couple of file folder folios that I am going to do a flip through in the next video. But I just wanted you to look at something pretty while I while I chatted. Um, I am doing this handheld, so I apologize. I'm doing the best I can to keep it at least somewhat steady so I can move around my room and show you my studio. So first off, some craft must-haves. I have found very helpful in my studio is to have a hand vac. A little hand vac. I'll show you where mine is um, and the kind it is. Um, I got it on Amazon. Um, it's a lifesaver for cleaning your studio. I really like it. Um, hand vac important. Um, also good lighting. Every workstation that you have, if you have more than one, where you travel around from your art position of your main crafting table to another table, I'd like to suggest you have good lighting wherever you go. Um, it, it is very important. I, I put lighting up, of course, along the length of my room and one that hangs from the ceiling over my desk, but that wasn't enough. I needed spotlighting. So I would like to encourage you to look at that. Also, um, again, then the word today is inspiration. So my question is, what are the kinds of things that inspire you? You need to keep asking yourself that from the paint color that you choose to the way the room is set up. Um, and I knew for me, what really inspires me is na nature. And so you're going to see on an accent wall, I kind of have nature on steroids, okay? But again, I walk in every morning and it makes me smile. And that's thinking about that for you. What is that that just gets your heart going in the morning or whenever you come in to your studio? S another idea. I watch a lot of the craft room tours and what I notice is that a lot of people display around their room artwork from other people. They'll talk about, oh, I got that from so-and-so and this in Happy Mail and this file folder in this and that. And that's great because that's a warm fuzzy. You have a lot of people that you know, you're swapping with or you're trading out journals or whatever. I want you to consider for a minute 
also displaying your artwork. I, I have placed around my studio things that I've made that I kept and that I'm really proud of. It was, you know, either my design or my take on a design. And I want to be reminded of the works that I've done. So yes, display other people, but think about displaying your own artwork as well. Um, last couple of thoughts. I, every um, spring, early summer, we get to have a convention up in Arlington, Texas. And it just so happens that it's the convention that Tim Holtz goes to um, and does all of his demoing. Um, we're very blessed to have him close. Well, about five years ago, he really helped me figure out more about my studio. And he asked me this question, what is your crafting style? And I, I looked at him, he goes, and I mean as an artist, not from a design perspective, but by you as an artist. And he gave me an example, and, and you've heard this on video too. He talks about how he's a digger. He loves to go digging in his stash for stuff. And that to him is the thrill of the hunt. And I realized as he was talking, I'm not really a digger. I don't really like digging because digging is frustrating to me. It slows me down and I have something in my head. I want to get it out and done and put in my journal and have it ready. And so I knew that that wasn't my style that my style was more visual organized. If I can see it, I'll use it. That absolutely transformed my art studio. Absolutely changed it when I got home. And you'll see, or visual organized is kind of the theme for what keeps me inspired in my studio. And again, there's no one that's right or wrong you're going to have your own thought about that and just maximize it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Whatever it is, the style that you like to craft. All right. And lastly, I'm going to tease you. I'm not going to tell you the answer yet, but I have a question. Do you know what the most overlooked part of your craft room is? That's your question as we begin our tour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm right now at my major workstation. This is where I do the bulk of my crafting and you'll see why. As I pan back now, oh, before I do that, can I just say that as we look at the furniture in my studio, I'd like to, sorry, just popped out there real quick. I'd like to tell you that most everything that I got was used at garage sales from the Ikea as is. Um, didn't spend a lot of money on furniture. And I tell crafters that you don't have to have the most expensive looking room. Some people do. But for me, I get really excited in the fact that I don't pay a lot for the stuff that I use. That just makes me feel good and it's repurposed. So here we go. Let me pan back a little bit and let me start to my right. I'm sorry, this would be my left. I am left-handed and so I put the tools that I use every day, they go in this oval big ceramic dish so they're out and visual. I don't have to dig for them. They're all ready to go. Now, I hope that my, I hope that my husband isn't watching this video because he's been asking me, where is that oval casserole dish? And I keep telling him, you know, honey, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, here it is. It's just a casserole dish, but it's wide enough and long enough and it fits right here on the side. 
So it keeps everything out in view for me. Now, as I come back to center, I'm going to go up here a little bit. I also have back there additional tools. I don't need all my pairs of scissors over here in, in the container. I have them over here. So everything's right in front of me and easy for me to reach. The little holder next to it is some ephemera. Those are the envelopes that I made and they're handy. I just have them out in front of me. But again, let's go up to the shelf. This is an Ikea shelf. It is dirt cheap. I got it in the as is section and very easy to install. And it holds a lot, as you can see. To my left, I have a little swivel with some more pens, markers in there. The basket next to it is ephemera that's done already. I have the um, plastic envelopes labeled with digitals in there from the different companies that I use. And then you've seen this before. This is, I hold a lot of my ephemera pieces in here from the master boards that I do. Um, it's a tiered shelf. I got this at a gift store. They had it in the clearance. So that was fun. And come over here and I've got some of the sorry silk that I use the most and a big thing of uh, colored buttons underneath it. And then some of my ephemera um, uh, booklets, books that I can go and get my stickers out of. And you'll see here, hints from Heloise, since my name is Eloise, I found that book, I gutted it and made it an idea book. So that's where all the ideas go that I see and I, that I want to try. And then this is where I record. So I've got my recording arm sitting right there. And now let's go up again. This is an Ikea cabinet. It attaches to the wall. It's got two doors on it, <clears throat> glass doors on either side, and then the middle is just open for additional storage, notebooks, workbooks, things like that. And then at the very top of that shelf is some of my artwork, some things that I've done. One of those uh, my grandson and I worked on together. Um, those inspire me. I keep them close. I want to watch. I want to look at it. So that's the wall that I face when I craft. Over to my right, when I talk about visual organization, here it is. I use these ac acrylic drawers and I've used these for quite a while now. They hold all my buttons the vintage buttons that I can see readily, very quick. Vintage hearts, some quilted hearts I got from a woman that I found on Facebook Marketplace. Um, some binding for pages that are really tattered. Uh, I've got Versamark, black inks for stamping. Over here, grunge inks, so those are all my browns. My red lead stamps my favorite stamps and background stamps that I use text and there's some envelopes on the bottom there and again I've got things that set up on top my logo stamp some paper rolls stapler uh, some of my um, one of my refills I haven't put them in there yet but those are the re-inkers for my pads and just some charms over there that I'm going to use for Christmas so those are sitting there and again, lighting. I got this light on Amazon. Again, not expensive at all, but it again helps me with just seeing a lot clearer. Then as I move back, I have two glass shelves over the top here. And again, one of these is my, I got that from Robin Dudley House. And then this is the book I made in her class. I have it out. It inspires me. It gives me great ideas again and again. And then at the very top is some happy mail and um, I got uh, this file folder in a swap. I loved it. Now you might be noticing something about this wall 
as I come back. This is my accent wall. And as you can see, I told you about nature. This is nature on steroids. That birch goes from floor to ceiling. And you know what it is? It's a shower curtain. Yeah, it's two shower curtains. They were eight bucks a piece. I found them in a catalog. I loved them, ordered them, and just put them up with staples along the top, stapled it down the wall. And then I also added wood, actual birch, around the window to, again, make it just a little more realistic. I love that wall. That wall makes my heart sing. So there you go. Think about that. Then I've got right over my computer, right here. I've got my Mac um, to, right there to my right. I have it on the back behind it, sitting up so I can see it, are tags. Some people put these tags away. I don't want to put them away. When I want a tag and the size I need, I've got it right out in front of me and I can pull it immediately and go to work. So again, it's accessible. Under the window here, this is my washi holder. It holds some washi tapes and my rusty bits. I've got it in a cigar box there. And another organization. You can see here, this is where I... I have my um, heat gun right here, and I can also plug in a hot glue gun if I need it there as well. A couple more organizing bins here and here, and things like reinforcements and my stamps, the Kodachrome holders and coin holders there, milk bottle caps there, there's a divider that holds um, some, again, some collages and pictures. Altered paper clips. I know exactly where they are and I can get to them really quick. My lace clusters are here. And what I can, I can do is use them and I see when I'm getting low and I've got to redo them again. And then my stains by Patty Pockets. I've got two of them that fit in there. So that again helps me stay organized there. Here's some journals that I use. One by my Mountain Girl Studio uh, in the bag that I love. Another divider for old book pages. Um, German, I've got some French pages in here. I keep my little stencils in there as well. They're all ready for me to use. And going up, I got this cabinet at Canton first Monday. It's a big trade show kind of thing once a month. This cabinet I got to hold all my mixed media. You know, my gessos in here, acrylics, my heavy body gel, things like that. They're all right there if I need them. And then these are where my cutters are. So I've got my big green cutter and my little We Are Memory Keepers cutter. Next project up and ready to go. So then over against the wall, <clears throat> I told you, I, I want to keep this video real, okay? Let's, let's tell the truth. Every studio has stacks. This stack is mine. I have not put it all away yet. It's sitting out. It's supposed to be filed in that file cabinet, and that was one that my dad made that I got from California. And I should have these papers and all this stuff put away. But the reality is, hey, I put it in a basket, so it doesn't bother me as much, and I'll get around to it. I will get around to it. So that, and underneath here, I have some drawers, additional tools, all of my um, adhesives in here, extra adhesives, extra washi, some flat laces in here, doilies down at the bottom. Again, just extra storage there. All right, let me carefully swing around. 
to the back wall. Now this is right behind me. It's, this area is only 10 feet wide. So it's, I can just turn and reach for things here. This came from Gail um, Agostinelli. I don't know how to say her last name. I apologize. But she talked about putting your laces on shower hook clips. I love the idea. Again, helped bring it out and get it visual for me. So I just look what I want. I can just clip it off, hang it right back up. So that's on an old bulletin board. I think it's a magnetic board, bulletin board there. And there's my plug-in for my vacuum. Then down here, I have more laces that are on the hooks. So if I need it, I can just pull it, look, cut off what I need, and put it right back quick and easy. All right, I'm going to start down here. These are the Alexa shelves, and I got these in the as-is. They were, I guess, redoing the showroom, and they got them, um, put them in the as-is. I raised them up a little bit. You can see there, my husband made a platform for me to raise them up a little bit, so I didn't have to bend over as much for these. And these are great storage. Let me just show you a couple of drawers. I've got all my little distress inks here, my Tim Holtz, whether it's the paper dolls, cabinet cards, tickets. So those go in there. I want to explain to you the next drawer though, because to me it's an important drawer. I hear all the time, all the time, from people, junk journalers, journal makers everywhere, I wish I used my die cuts more. I don't use them as much as I'd like to. Well, I'd like to suggest I've got an organization idea for you. A lot of times, the machine to use it, your Sizzix or Gemini or whatever you use, it's not handy. You don't have room for it. Well, I hope I'm, I can give you an idea to relook at your craft room. I don't know if you've seen Angela Kerr do her pages and the way she uses die cuts. It is to die for. Well, I want to make mine more accessible. So here's what I did. I got the die cuts that I use the most and I put them in a little metal tray. A lot of shapes that I use to cut out for, um, you know, words or sayings. A lot of times we need to get the little pieces out of the die cut and you could use your little foam pad there. You've got your roller there, it's immediately there. Circles, die cuts, this is, um, I, I'll use this quite a bit. So I put it there handy, so I'm ready to go. Right here are all of the platforms that I'd use, the different platforms that you use depending on what you're cutting or embossing. They're all right here. Now, they're in the second drawer. Let me show you. There's my Sizzix machine right there. It's handy. So my die cut drawer is right here. And then my machine is not even a, two feet away. It's right there. So think about putting your die cut, the ones you use the most, in a close proximity to your Sizzix. All right, let me go up for a minute. I want to talk about the printer. I look at craft room tours, like I mentioned. People have printers all the time. I look at where their printers are, and I just smile. Because a lot of you are making the same mistake I did, and it costs you space. Do you see that printer? It could have been just sitting on top of the Alexa shelves, which it was for a long time. And I was complaining to my girlfriend that when you put a lot of paper, heavy paper, like your Red River papers or your parchment paper or whatever, when you put it in your Alexa drawers 
or you're trying to store it somewhere, it takes up a lot of space. So my girlfriend came up with this idea. I can't take credit for it, but I sure maximized the idea. My husband came in and he built me some shelves to put under my printer. So the question I asked you in the beginning, the most overlooked space in your craft room is vertical. It's vertical. We're not maximizing it enough. Look at by lifting up my printer vertically now, I've got all this space for paper. All of my papers fit in here now and I pull them out, printer's right there, ready to go. Saves you time. So that's the vertical shelves there. Let me show you one more drawer over here that I love. I use this drawer a lot. Love me some metal. Um, thank you, Tim Holtz, for being our metal ideology and um, giving us embellishments that we can use in our journals. Now again, I don't want to go digging as much as he does. I want it out visually organized. So I'll put two or three items in the same box, but I don't want to have to dig any more than that. So that drawer is my metals, and then this one is additional. This has some Prima metals in it and some things that I've alcohol inked um, for projects coming up. So yeah, so metals and the rest, we're going to go through all the drawers, but you get the idea of organizing so you can see. All right, and then you can see my punches are right behind the printer there. My husband built a couple of shelves and you can see they're a little saggy because <laughs> those punches are heavy. Just know when you go to store those, they need a lot of support because they're heavy. And then that back window that goes out to the garden, I've got, again, a lot of some additional twine and things that I tie off my journals with. Oh, look, the grandbabies. <laughs> How did they get in here? Hey, you got to have pictures everywhere. And there you go. So let me stand up without jarring you too much. And let me give you the overview. Let me turn my chair around here so you can see how I sit. So this is the overview of my craft station. Right over here at the top of that shelving is all my coffee dyed um, tissue papers, regular paper, envelopes, doilies. Everything is there organized by plastic bag. You can see as it come around here, everything. I just roll my chair wherever I need to to find whatever I need. And then my sewing machine is to my left. It's right there. So I hope there's some ideas in there for you for your immediate craft space. But now let me turn and show you the rest of the story. This is the rest of my craft room. We're gonna, we're gonna go through it, but I just wanted to give you the overview. And here's back to the front door, and that leads out to the garden. So, let's start here. This was, uh, my dad made this hope chest for my mom um, back in the 40s. And um, I brought it home from California after he passed away. And my mom is a sewer. So I used that to keep my fabrics in. Um, so I, the top lifts up and I've got plenty of storage there for fabric. You can see over here I've run a little wire clothesline. I got that at Ikea. It holds up some linens, um, things that I want out in view that I use. All right, so let's come into the middle. We'll start right here. This I got an estate sale 
for eight dollars I guess the guy was an architect and this is where they keep it's a device they keep their plans in all of their um, big sheets of paper so boy I scooped it up I use it I've got laces in there muslin um, all kinds of canvas in there and then my larger papers fit right in the back then I want you to see my pride and joy now this has just come into my studio in the last two weeks I needed more storage and I, I had this this was all empty this place this station right here didn't have anything in it so I went to Ikea got my measurements and I brought home a white ugly cabinet <laughs> and then I said boy that's really ugly so I got out my IOD transfers and I rubbed them on and loved how it came out see now this piece inspires me I even put some of the transfer rub-ons at the top here yeah I love this piece I absolutely love it took a little bit of elbow grease but it's worth it for the impact it has on your studio then at the top of there this is a drawer to an old dresser I just redid it and put some more transfers around the front there just to kind of dress it up and that's where I keep a lot of my laces and then over here is a basket where I keep my finished journals these are the ones um, some are for Etsy I keep them out and I keep these out because they inspire me um, there's a lot of hard work I like looking at them so I will display them and have them out and the window here I've just got kind of some knickknacks up there things that I like which moves us over to my workstation number two this is um, a conference table and again I got this at Ikea it was in the as is um, it had some scratches on the top well you know what I don't really care about that it can have scratches that's fine um, on here is where we'll get together do some classes this expands out and becomes bigger but for me I just compact it and put it up against the wall I have my card stocks there within reach clipboard just tray and there's that hand vac I was telling you about um, the plug-in is there um, behind that clipboard and I use that thing every day it's a great tool for your craft room and then here's some journals that are done but not finished you know what that means they're not quite done yet so around here you walk getting closer to the back now here's my mixed media cart and my dirty sink <laughs> uh, we brought water to the barn just so I would have it for cleanup and quickly before I move over to the right here let me say a word I, I left this out because I wanted to be sure and bring this up in that class I took with Robin Dudley Howes one of the great tips that she gave is whatever project you're working on put everything that you're gathering up for that project and corral it put it in a tray one tray per project because a lot of us are working on multiple things at once and it gets a little confusing and it can be kind of crazy so use your trays I have my trays I store right under there and I use them. in fact I've got here's a project over here in the corner I've got my tray got it got it all corralled ready to go to work all right and let me say a quick word about the shelves over this table I know a lot of you have 
wooden blocks, stamps. I would like to suggest pull them out and use them as a design element in your studio. They're beautiful and that inspires me and it reminds me, stamp, do something different on your pages. And it's nice when they're out and you can see them and you don't have to dig. Sorry, Tim. All right. Um, and lastly, on this wall, let me show you this picture. Remember I told you about displaying your own artwork? Well, sometimes it's inspiring to display other people's artwork too. Uh, we went on a trip to Colorado and in this tiny town, there was a beautiful studio and I went in and met the artist was there and I started talking about her work and, and she talked about her technique and how she did this and what inspired her. And it was the most inspiring conversation. And I looked at that piece and I looked at my husband and I said, that belongs in my studio. She painstakingly packed that up to ship it to my studio. And I never thought it would come in one piece, but it did, it did. And I love it. I love it up there. It does inspire me. And then lastly over here is this antique piece that I found with lots of dividers in it. It helps to keep things organized like my die cuts. So these are the Tim Holtz thicker alterations um, die cuts. And then over here, you know, some miscellaneous encaustic stuff, books, tissue papers, envelopes, used envelopes. And then in that corner, I've got fabrics in there, which brings me to my last workstation here. This station is where I do my ironing here. I do my cutting, major cutting here on this table. Um, I also have more books, kind of this is like my garden section, wildflower section that I know to come and pull. Um, it's just some projects back here. This is my craft room rules that I got this off of Etsy. Use your imagination, be sure to play nice, share, have lots of fun, laugh and giggle, clean up your mess and make great memories. Yeah, I love that. And um, I had it displayed on a wall and I wanna change it to another area so I can see it better. I love that. And then over here, I call this my Tim Holtz tree. These are additional things of Tim Holtz that I got on clearance or I have too many over in my other drawer. So it does spin um, lots of fun things on my Tim Holtz tree. And then over here is my chippy paint bookcase. I use this a lot at booths that I do and people always stop and comment on it because it's very raw looking but it's gorgeous and in here i display a lot of the things that i've made and some etsy stuff down there kleenex again lighting um that corner again i i could have put it on the floor but i didn't i went vertical with it and i stuck it on the end of the table and up i went and of course, at the very top, there's the word for the day, inspire. Then over here, we've got what I call my ugly cabinet. <laughs> this is the big Ikea cabinet. I got it as is for a song. And inside is just stuff, okay? Let's be honest, we don't have to organize everything. And these are things, you know, Ziploc bags. I've got some sprays, acrylic sprays, extra ribbon, cleaners, garbage bags, laminate. I mean, just stuff. And it's going to stay closed and I'm not going to organize it. All right. And then coming around. Oh, let me say one thing. I forgot. Let me come down here in this storage. Under here, that's Christmas storage. Can I suggest that every season you can pull this out, but at, in January when you're done, box it up. 
and put it away till the next year. It just helps in your organization if you're limited on space to not have things out that you're not using in the season. That's my seasonal tip for you. And here we have just some quick organization. These are individual um, pattern single sheets of paper by color, glitter, specialty, vintage woods, vintage, the reds, the greens, you know, whatever. I can just pull that out and look and grab. Here I've got tissue papers that I use and more old books in there, additional storage. But now let's come to this wall. Oh boy, this was my splurge. We went to Smithfield, Texas on a junkin day, looking at estate sales and looking at pretty stores, warehouse stores, and we walked up and saw these. They're old seed cabinets. These were in an old hardware store in Smithville, and you put the seeds in the front container here, and then the packets go in the back. So if you're interested in that seed, you just pull out the drawer and grab the packets. So there were two of them. My husband looked at me and I looked at him and said, oh, we got to have these. So I have stamps in one and over here are like envelopes, brown paper bags, gift bags. I actually even have an empty drawer down there. I'm so excited. All right. And remember I told you what our theme for the day besides inspire is vertical. See, what I had on the top of the seed cabinets, I just had things stored on the top, but I needed more storage. So we found this TV entertainment center, dirt cheap on Craigslist. Somebody was just getting rid of it. So we just, <laughs> I took the measurements and figured out it would fit on top of the seed cabinets. And so in here, I'm able to store more additional books with ledgers, manila folders, more different size books, die cuts. A lot of my die cuts are in here, stamps. And then in these boxes, I have lacy bits, mixed media, and coffee dyed papers. So I have a way to store all of those and it looks pretty and it inspires me i love those colors and then at the very top more die cuts my iod transfers and the stencils and then i found these for lacy bits these are for snippets and you can see here i have two more to fill <laughs> so yeah i'm hopeful and then vintage linens over here so easy to find but that storage unit has made such a difference. And again, it's vertical. And of course, I love my big sign, my vintage sign. And lastly, we come to the last section. This unit right here, full of baskets, was at a garage sale for a song. I scooped it up immediately when I saw it. In fact, it's really taller than I am. <laughs> yeah, it's great stores a lot of things. I actually have some fabric that I store by color. I've got blues in here over in this side. I've got everything from napkins down there to um, my binding tools in there. You've got flowers and bling, embellishments, some sprays, some distress stains, ribbons, tissue paper, things like that and that was a unit that I got um, I believe I got these at the container store the alpha shell alpha drawers and then at the very top is all my Anna Griffin stuff that I use and her die cut um, I, I find that the Gemini works a little better with her stuff so it's all plugged in and ready for me to pull out and use right there. 
All right, though so I guess I've saved the best to last. I wanted to show you the first thing that you see when you walk into my studio. And it is a source of inspiration for me every day. And I, I wanted to pass it on. I hope that it will be to you as well. This is a banner that I had made at um, a store. It was not very expensive to make. And I use it, I bring it to every booth that I do. It's got my contact information there at the bottom with my logo. But at the top, there's a saying. Let me read it to you. Someday, all they'll have are your words. Journal now. I want to close by asking you why you do what you do. I think for everybody to be content and happy in their business, you have to know why you're doing it. And that for me, capsulize what I felt that these journals that they're tiring sometimes and they're frustrating and they're not coming together the way we like or we're not very inspired and yet we're maybe on a deadline for a project you know it doesn't matter whether you sell your journals you give them away you make them for family members it doesn't matter because what we've got to realize is someday the words that they put in the journals that we make, sometimes they're so powerful. And that eventually those grandkids or the daughter is going to have a journal with mom's words in it when mom is gone. Do we realize really the power that we have in creating vessels for people's story that will get passed on? That to me is why I get up in the morning through a pandemic that's frustrating as all get out through days that I, I'm tired and I don't feel very inspired, I want to encourage you. Get up, do your best, make a journal that will last, because someday all they'll have are your words. Journal now. Thanks, you all. Thanks for subscribing. I look forward to my next video where I get to show you some fun works that will house more words that people will treasure forever. I look forward to it. Have a great day.